Hey guys, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, your clubhouse at the intersection of comics history and action figures. And we're back today with yet another mystery box, and I think this one's going to be pretty fun. So we're going to get started here in just a second. But before we do, I want to let everybody, everybody know we are rapidly approaching 1,000 subscribers. I never thought that we would actually get to that point. So if you like what we're doing, if you want to be a part of our channel and, and continue with us on this wacky journey, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And uh, we'll, we'll do this together. But if you are new to the place and this is your first mystery box, this is a box of toys that I've pulled out of the attic. I haven't opened this thing in years. As a matter of fact, this one says Spidey Movie Marvel Movies. So these are very likely going to be old, old toy biz toys from the earliest days, way before the MCU was a thing. These are obviously Fantastic Four movie figures. There may be some Spider-Man movie figures in here, but I think that this is going to be a real treasure chest of early 2000 Toy Biz action figures. So let's let's see what we got. Yep, there you have it. Look at that. We've got a ton of Fantastic Four figures right on the top. I can actually see some uh, uh, X-Men figures in here. Let's go. Let's see what we're dealing with. So, oh man, look at this. So obviously Human Torch from the Fantastic Four movie. Uh, if you are younger or you just chose to forget this, that's Captain America. That's Chris Evans, the actor who plays Captain America, played Johnny Storm in those first two uh, Fantastic Four movies. And he was actually really good, which shows what a versatile actor he is, that he can be such a prick as Johnny Storm and then be the perfect embodiment of Captain America in the MCU. But look at this, fully translucent figure, got some great flame effects. It has all of your anticipated articulation that you expect from Marvel Legends. The shoulders come down pretty nicely. Head sculpt is phenomenal with that great, great flame effect. That's a good figure, that's a really good start. Okay, and it looks like we're gonna have some, some various things so Michael Chiklis, the commish, played the thing in those two. You know, I went back and watched that first Fantastic Four movie a couple of months ago, and it wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't perfect. Doctor Doom was kind of terrible. And, and this looked a little bit like a rubbery thing put on somebody, but the movie wasn't that bad. It really goes to show, like, why is, you know, the Marvel movie so good and then, like, Green Lantern sucked. Like, it, it's a really fine line, I think. Uh-oh, he's going to do something. He's got a pull on him. Let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> let's do it again. Nice, it's clobbering time. I love it. Toy Biz was making figures that would make collectors happy because, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty accurate figure, but they also were making toys, toys for kids. So this is... Um, a dog chewed up Electro from those god awful Andrew Garfield uh, Spider Man movies. We're going to pretend like that didn't happen. All right, here's another torch. Uh, I, I maybe like the translucent look of this one a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit lighter, kind of darker through the core. I don't love all of this flame right up around his neck, but still, that's, that's pretty sweet. And then. That's a different scale too. Look, that's that's this one is slightly smaller than this one. I think this may be from the second FF movie. They may have downscaled the figures just a little bit. Here is from the first FF movie, and I want to say this is the first Human Torch they released. Look at that thing. I mean, you could put that in a in a uh, a comic display right now. Oh, and he does something too. Okay, so at some point, oh no, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. That is so cool. And it still works. I mean, this is 15, 16 years old, and the batteries still work. Oh, I love you, Toy Biz. You are so good. Uh, Susie, so a nice invisible girl. If you can't tell, that's Jessica Alba's head sculpt there. But again, you could put this in a comic display right now, and it would work. It looks like the plastic on the torso has aged differently than the plastic on the head and the arms. So unfortunately, that's kind of what happens when you have older toys, even ones that have been put away. Yeah, man, here he is. Dugray Scott, the original, what? Oh, it's Hugh Jackman. 
My bad. Okay, so this is Hugh Jackman from the very first X-Men movie. If you remember, Mission Impossible actor Dugray Scott was actually scheduled to play Wolverine, but had to back out at the last minute because Tom Cruise would not let him off of the Mission Impossible set. And the rest is history. Hugh Jackman becomes the Wolverine for a generation. And here is another one. This is from that early scene right at the beginning of the first X-Men movie. And these claws, let's see, there's probably something that makes them pop out. But that's pretty cool. They, they go go in and then there's, oh, I think if you move his wrist, or, there it is. Oh, let's do that again. Let's see if we can get that correct on camera. So put the, put the claws in and you pull his hand back. Yeah, nice, good civilian Wolverine figure. Now we'll say this over and over again, but remember these were way, way before computer facial recognition uh, software allowed for action figures to be almost exact likenesses of the actors. So this is just guys who were doing, you know, two up sculpts to get these looking really, really close. So let's give them a nice. Another torch. Um, I want to say this is one of the more rare human torch figures from one of the like last lines. The last couple of waves of the Fantastic Four figures did not see huge distribution. Here, Torch is, I don't know, he's blowing up out of a mailbox of some sort. I figure this probably went with a base that connected. But again, look, that's a, that's a pretty good young Chris Evans. I mean, it really does. It really looks like him. And they, they did such a great job with these flame effects. You know, he's, this is, this flame back here is like kind of hiding the, the toy mechanism, but that flame kind of coming off the back of his head looks really nice. And look at that smirk. I mean, it absolutely captures the, the jerkiness. Yes, Patrick Stewart, Professor Xavier, sweet wheelchair. Oh, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Oh, okay, so this is obviously the base, so something somehow the human torch blows up this base somehow cyclops in his civilian gear if i can get it there's a little uh kind of telescoping light there if i can get my overhead light to shine you can kind of see how his eyes light up so james marston is that his name the guy who always ends up with the crappiest roles who gets one as cyclops here Yep, yeah, this was what was wrong with that first FF movie. This this just kind of never worked. I, I actually hope when they do a Marvel uh, MCU FF movie that they don't go straight to Doom. It would be cool if they did something other than Doctor Doom right off the bat. All right, now we're talking. Look at this bad boy. Oh, yeah. Eat your heart out. And, of course, he kind of... Not mess with me. I'm the best there is at what I do. And what I do is swing my arms around. Nice, Wolverine. Okay. Owen Gruffell, Gruffith, a Welsh actor, Welsh or Scottish actor who played Mr. Fantastic. Actually, really good casting. I mean, he, you know, first of all, that looks exactly like that freaking actor. I mean, that's, that's a remarkable 2005 sculpting job. But he also really does look like Reed Richards. I mean... They got that part right. I don't know. Something. All right. Wolvie's angry now. Look at that. He's got big barrel chest. Again, looks like he has the the same action feature, the swinging, swinging claws action feature. You know, unfortunately, these, these hips are really going to prevent him from being posed anything other than about just like that. But... You know, it's a toy, and they were making cool toys. That, oh. So, Human Torch somehow has got a battery. Somehow, Human Torch would fit into this, and I'm sure light up somehow. We'll see if we can find the one that, that goes with that. Something made a noise. Okay, again, this was from the second movie. Smaller size, smaller scaled figure there. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, when you put a James Bond, uh, you know, girl in your movie, you're going to end up with something that looks sort of like this. 
they did come out with a second version with her. Uh, this is Famke Jameson, obviously, is Jean Grey. And they did come out with a second version that was not quite so boobalicious as that one. Okay, this is awesome. Look at this. Great ball-jointed shoulders, ball-jointed hips. Really, really accurate sculpt and design. Look at all of the detail in that sculpt. And he, uh, I think, maybe you hit him. Somehow, he makes a crashing, you know, a clobbering sound as well. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Awesome thing. I think we know what that goes to. Oh, oh, and look, it's going to, if it still works, it has a, <laughs> oh, he's got a, a fist smashing action. That's so great. Another base for the Human Torch. Uh, that one may make sparks, potentially, or it just rolls around some. Not 100% sure what that goes to. Oh, look at this. So that looks like a, um, it actually looks like Ultimate Spider-Man's version of Rhino. This is not a Marvel Legend. It just, I think, is a fun toy that somehow made its way into the box. Here we go. Here is, okay, smaller version. So this is not the same as this. So this one is the six inch scale Green Goblin. This is actually the second series Green Goblin. And the reason why I know is because the mask doesn't come off. The first series Green Goblin, you could take the mask off and you could see the Willem Dafoe, uh, Norman Osborn head underneath. But that's a six inch scale figure, whereas this one is more of a five inch scale Green Goblin. Still cool. Got parts of a Goblin glider some tank. Oh god, hopefully we'll find the rest of this. This is part of the Mystique costume that would allow you to turn Mystique into Wolverine. Okay, Spidey. Uh, one of the second versions, you know, it's all about the play feature with the web shooting stuff. And again, smaller scale. This may actually have been for the third Spider-Man movie at this point with, with those figures. Here is yet another different Green Goblin. This is different from, from the one that we were looking at just a minute ago because this one has a different elbow articulation. I wonder if that played into... And he's, he's obviously brighter as well. Like, really, really cool. Look at how cool that metallic paint looks for that Green Goblin. This, this character took a lot of heat for looking like a Power Ranger bad guy. And... You know, I get it, but when you watched it in the theater, it still worked. That, that movie was still so good. This one wasn't. This was the third Spider-Man movie, and you see he's got his, you know, Sandman stuff all over him. Random part. Oh, yeah, here we go. Nice. Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus. Got some sweet Doc Ock tentacles. They have different... Oh, they're, look, oh, they're articulated. So there, these things are articulated and painted. I mean, look at the look at the level of detail that's just going into the end of Doc Ock's tentacles. You know, bring them in. You've got you know pincher action. I love Toy Biz figures. I mean, that does look exactly like Alfred Molina. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And no shirt, so sexy time. Love it. He's still got his loafers on. That, that, you know, that's a look, right? Loafers, no shirt, go for it. Fabulous. Uh, you know, we can call this Cushing's disease Spider-Man. He's got this huge, giant hump on the back of him. I don't even want to know, but let's see what happens when you pull the string. Oh, my. Is he trying to climb up a wall? Let's see if it'll do it again. Well, that's like, that's like Bruce Lee fast. It's going so fast that the camera can't even catch it. But somehow this mechanism back here has Spidey swinging his arms really fast. Shocker. <laughs> oh, nice. And it has like a tether line so you don't just pull him apart. But, you know, it's not easy to do the Mr. Fantastic look. But there we go. Old Stretcho himself. Another really great sculpt of the head. But, I mean, I like I like the ingenuity, you know? A lot of good articulation for a 2004 you know, or 5 figure. 
I've been looking at this. I don't know what this is. Oh, you know, that's probably some kind of like Susie web effect. Okay, here's proof that these boxes have not been opened in forever. The rubber of the plastic is like stuck together. I mean, look, there's just parts of Mr. Fantastic that are just stuck to this because nobody has been in these boxes for years. Spidey. Webs stuck together with obviously caught a Spider-Man head in the web. And uh, this is like the battle damage Green Goblin. So see how he's got that scuffed up look. So we had a battle damage Spidey in the line. This is the battle damage Green Goblin. Cool. Oh, this is a good figure. This is a good figure. Look at Tobey Maguire. I mean, that is, you know, you just don't get a lot of civilian, straight up civilian movie figures. But there he is. High school student Peter Parker captured by Tobey Maguire. Oh, that's nice. Red light. Oh, yep. I probably bought 10 of these. So this was the, the first movie, Superposable Spider-Man. Unfortunately, they all tend to have this problem, that the head joint just gets looser and looser over time. But, you know, if you take yourself back to 2002, Marvel Legends has either just started or hasn't started yet. You know, we had the Spider-Man Classics toys, but we did not have anything that had this level of sculpting combined with this level of articulation. I mean, look at the, the web pattern, the, the look of the suit. Again, this is the first time Spider-Man has appeared, you know, in a major movie, and, and they stayed true. You know, I mean, the, the red's a little off, I guess. It's not, you know, quite what I would think in the cartoon or in the comic, but this was a great figure, and I mean, I bought a million of them. And he also flip, makes thwippy hands. Not a great figure. Bought it anyway. Definitely not a great figure. That's where his, I guess, electrostatic action comes from because, you know, that's what I think of when I think of Dr. Doom is shooting electricity from his hands. Didn't work for Electro, didn't work for Doom. Oh, it's like a scorpion. I do not remember this at all. This looks like a bad, like, 90s G.I. Joe figure, but I think it's supposed to be scorpion somehow. Oh, I don't remember this figure either. What line was this? Somebody figure this out and help me in the comments and tell me what line this was because that is a dope looking Mysterio. Five inch scale. That's cool. What else? Craven. All right. It's kind of coming back to me, but I really do not remember what toy line this came from. And then here is a lizard that goes right along with it. Got the jaw articulation. Man, this is nice. I need to do something with these. Those are actually pretty cool. Oh, that's that's part of it too. Now that's not quite as cool. Yikes, but Black Cat. Huh, wow, I like it. Here's a, oh, let's, let's down boy. Uh, this is not the same. This is not the same Doc Ock figure. He's, he's missing a tentacle. But you can see these tentacles also articulated, but, well, actually, that does look a lot like. No, but that's a different head sculpt, I think. Cool. You know, they made a lot of the same characters. Here's a goblin glider. All right, so this is, you know, where you get frustrated. So you saw that great superposable Spider-Man, and then here's something that has, you know, just no movement there, a very weird bicep swivel, very little movement there, pre-posed flexed hips. So there's virtually nothing that you can do with that. As a static action figure, probably pretty cool, but eh, that's, there's not a lot of action in that bad boy. That's a good one. So they were so true to the comic in that first Spider-Man movie. They, uh, you know, Spidey gets his powers. He's like, just like the rest of us. How can I make money? And so he throws on this homemade mask and suit and goes and enters a wrestling contest. If you can, you know, stay in the, uh, in the, in the ring with Bone Crusher, then you could win a little bit of money. And this actually will convert. You can take it apart and there's a Spider-Man suit underneath. So you can actually convert this wrestler, Peter Parker, into a full Spider-Man figure. That looks like something Reed Richards would have. 
Wow. Uh, it's got three slashes, so I'm assuming that's something that has to do with Wolverine somehow. Yeah, so here's here's the first Green Goblin figure. So again, really cool articulation, ball joints everywhere. Little thin, little thin in the legs and the arms, but come on. That's the last temptation of the Green Goblin. I mean, look, they got those hollowed out cheeks of Willem Dafoe perfect. That's that's just crazy good. I mean, that is crazy good. Now, granted, you know, you can kind of see the back of his head, but that's a great action figure. I think this came from the second Spider-Man movie. I'm not sure what this mole here is. I imagine it does something or attaches to something, but, you know. Uh, the eyes, the eyelets were whiter in the second Spider-Man movie than in the first one. They were more gray, kind of gray silver in the first one. They were white for the second movie. So this is second movie also. And this is basically the superposable figure, but for the second movie, uh, a little bit darker. You remember it was more blue. Now it's, it's closer to a navy or, or a black, but it's got that great superposable frame. And then all the stuff. You know, Toy Biz, just, they just gave you so much stuff. I mean, there's a parking meter. You know, there's a Sandman claw. Here's the extra arms for Peter Parker. Here's a here's a rubbery, oh, this is the rubbery mask that would have gone over the top of that Peter Parker figure that we saw. So that's what that is. Different Mr. Fantastic parts. We got a Broadway sign. Just cool stuff. Yeah, web. There's a web backpack. That actually, I think, came from a, a comic figure. But great stuff. That, that was a fun box. Stuff in there that I honestly, genuinely did not remember. Some great movie figures. A trip down the pre-MCU movie, movie lane. Good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you enjoyed our mystery boxes, if you enjoy all of our other stuff, please subscribe, hit like, hit the notification bell. Keep growing with us, man. We're just, we're just on the way up. Thanks again. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.